I don't know why they call this online editing tool after the deadline since you really should use it before your writing is due. But the weird name aside, after the deadline is a great spelling, grammar, and style checker that you can use to proofread your essays, your blog posts, and any other short pieces of writing. And in this video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to use. Hey, I'm Suzanne Davis, and I'm an online academic writing tutor, and I help my students reach their writing goals. This video is the third video in a series of videos on fantastic free writing tools and resources that I use with my students. The first two videos were on Hemingway Editor and SlickWrite, so if you haven't seen those videos, definitely check those out because they're really great comprehensive editing tools. Today, we're looking at After the Deadline, which is a proofreading tool. So After the Deadline helps you with grammar, spelling, and then it also makes some style suggestions. It doesn't make as many style suggestions as you would find with Hemingway Editor or SlickWrite. But because After the Deadline has a spell checker, it really makes it a great proofreading tool, especially for those of us that type really fast or have trouble spelling. So let's take a look at how you can use it with your writing. This is After the Deadline. The URL is www.afterthedeadline.com. You'll see here that it is a spell checker a style checker, and that it also is a grammar checker. After the deadline is free, it's open source technology. You can download it so that you can use it on a web browser or as different plugins. I haven't tried any of those, but if you wanted to, you would just click on the download tab and follow the directions from there. I've only used the website and that's what I'm going to show you today. Click on the tab that says demonstration. You'll notice here that the URL has changed to www.polishmywriting.com. If you wanted to just start proofreading right away, you could type in that URL and you will come to this page. The first thing you do is copy and paste your text into the box. Here I have part of a blog post that I was working on. Next, I click check writing. And here you'll see that it highlights spelling errors, grammar suggestions, and style suggestions. My spelling errors are in red. And here it works just like any other spell checker that you would find, like in Microsoft Word or Google Docs. You have a choice of the correct spelling. You could ignore the su suggestion or you could ignore all. I'm going to correct the spelling so that the word is available. I have another spelling error here. And the correct spelling for essential is what I'm choosing. You'll see here that for is spelled correctly. It's F-O-U-R, so that's for the number four. But it's underlined in red because I used the incorrect for. After the deadline doesn't check for just misspelled words, it checks for misused words. So here I shouldn't have used for the number. The sentence reads, Google Docs is essential to the writing groups I participate in for blogging and creative writing. So I will change that to for F-O-R. 
And I have one more spelling error here, and that's the word effectively. So I changed that. Grammar suggestions are in green, and here will be revised is underlined. The sentence is the writing will be revised. I click on that and it tells me that it's passive voice. So I could get an explanation. I could ignore the suggestion if I wanted to keep using passive voice, or I could ignore all if I didn't mind any passive voice in my writing. But I do want to change this to active voice because it's stronger. But let me look at the explanation first. Here you'll see that the explanation says revise will be revised with active voice. Active voice makes it clear who is doing what. So in an active sentence, the person that is acting is the subject. And then I have some examples of changing passive voice to active voice. So I will change this to active voice. And the sentence, the writing will be revised. I'm going to change that. To we will revise the writing. Okay, and now I just have two style suggestions here. Now the style suggestions that After the Deadline makes usually are suggestions about making phrases or vocabulary simpler and clearer to read. You'll see here that location is underlined and here it points out that location is a complex expression. So there is simpler vocabulary I could choose. The sentence I have is, you're not limited to working with writers in the same location. I could change that to place, site. I could look up the explanation of a complex expression. I could ignore it if I wanna keep that word or ignore all if I wanna keep all uses of the word location. I'm changing it to place. Here's another style suggestion. It's the same thing, complex expression. The word participate is underlined. I think I will change participate to take part. Now my sentence reads, Google Docs is essential to the writing groups I take part in for blogging and creative writing. I made all of my changes. I just want to be sure that everything is correct, so I'm clicking check writing. Nothing is underlined. So what I would do next is just copy and paste this text back into my document. And and keep writing. So you'll see that this is perfect for proofreading. Go ahead and try after the deadline with your writing. And my question of the day for you is what editing tools or resources do you use? And please post that in the comments below because we all learn from each other and it's great to see what other tools are out there. And if you come up with something new, I'll make a video on it. And if you want to get more videos on tools, on resources you can use to make your writing better, or you want to learn tips and tutorials on any aspect of academic writing, then subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on that bell so you don't miss my new videos. Cheers!